the waters began to rise and war broke out. Nostalgia became a way of life. There wasn't a lot to look forward to. So Hugh Jackman, you play an investigator of the minds and reminiscence, and you actually signed on to this project without even reading the script. Well, first of all, I knew her work. I loved her work from Westworld. So I knew the kind of world she could build and how intricate she could make it and just what a brilliant writer, storyteller she was. So when as soon as she told me the idea for this, we're in the future, Miami's pretty much submerged. It's so hot now that everyone lives at night. It's too hot to live during the day. And there's a machine that can make you relive memories for real, fully. I was like, all right, this is some really great ideas. It's really a movie to see in the cinema. If yeah. you have a chance, or IMAX, if you have a chance to see it in that format, the the bigness of the world and somehow the poetry of the story just is even more effective. No, totally. People have to see this in the theater. You think you want answers? Well, you don't. Where is she? Where is she? Lisa Joy, congratulations on your directorial debut. Just so <laughs> exciting. Um, I, talking to your cast, it was so awesome to hear how highly they spoke about you when it came to, you know, breaking down stereotypes and just your filmmaking process. And speaking of just stereotypes and, you know, the characters that you're making, can you talk about why it's so important for you to break those stereotypes? Within film, it's important for me to break stereotypes because I think people relate to um, characters that they see a bit of themselves in. Mm -hmm. And people aren't stereotypes, you know, we are complex. The ideas of, you know, the hero or the femme fatale or the best friend, those are shorthand ways of referring to characters that have been depicted in, in years of storytelling. But there's deeper truths than just those headings. And it's uh, it's just a bit of character excavation to show people for who they are in their totality. How much did you really know her? How much did you love? Who was she? Who was she when not with me? That's so Lisa. Lisa always wants to undercut the predictable, the obvious, because life yeah. isn't like that. Yeah. You know, and the funny thing about me doing this role. We were already working together on Westworld. We were in Singapore. And the way she presented it was, why can't you play Watts? Like we were already having a conversation about it. I'm like, uh, I don't know, who's Watts? Um, and then two days later, she sent me the script. I read it, I thought it was so dope. But we were both dealing with in this internalized, we had internalized this notion of what a woman in the military fighting for her six foot something tall friend should look like. And so here we were able to smash that stereotype. You put me as Watts and you deliver precisely something that antagonizes the stereotype of what a woman is. We as artists, as filmmakers, we want to break down stereotypes in an effort to reframe who we are as a humanity so that we can serve ourselves and each other better. When she approached me for to play this character, she went right away. She goes, look, I, I know it's a villain. I know like it's kind of a stereotype to have an Asian gangster villain, but I want to change that image and impression with this guy. I want him, first of all, very three dimensional. I want you know his backstory to be clear. I want him to be a person that's a villain, but also vulnerable. But on top of that, I want to help change the image of Asian American males on screen. You know, oftentimes Asian American males are either stereotype or emasculated. And she goes, I want to make it, make this character pop off the screen in a way that we've never seen an Asian American male uh, uh, do that before. You know, and there's a very unique situation of, of having an Asian American director work with an Asian American actor. Um, and we had so, so many common things about how we grew up and all that kind of stuff that it was kind of interesting. I felt like I had a sister with me on set, you know. I love that. Um, I just want to talk about the accent really quick because it was just yeah. so fun to see. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like developing that accent for you? Yeah, that it, that was an interesting thing because we wanted to make this character memorable. And I go, you know, I don't think I've ever seen an Asian American male character speak with a Southern accent before. Yeah. Right? And I go, this guy, he may not be from New Orleans, but he spent a lot of time there. And I know from when I filmed Badlands there, like I started speaking with a Southern draw a little bit just because it's so, it sounds so gorgeous.